Okay. Uh, President Arsene of Costa Armenta. Wait, Arsene Guadalupe of Costa Armenta. Uh, I am so grateful for her, for Ms. Cantrell, for Mr. Haas, and for all of those in Student Council for really stepping up to, to put this on. And then, at the last minute, I send out messages to Dr. Prague, uh, Michael Greenland, and others who have supported us in the past with like very little notice, and they step up, and they're here. And the mayor, with very little notice, and he steps up, and he's here. And I look out, at all of these people here, and I think about how much you have blessed my life this year and over so many years. You know, I, I don't believe in a lot of, I guess there are accidents, there's accidents, sure. But I know that the Lord brought me to Mesa High 25 years ago. I know He did. Because it changed my life. Mesa High changed my life and has made it so much better and the students and the parents and the teachers and the administrators have blessed my life in so many ways that I just can't not say thank you. Um, I also love what Dr. Pryak says in the, the invocation in the song about Lord let us serve you which is basically what that song is all about Hare Krishna simply means praise God so now I'm going to get to my script where am I now uh, um, <coughs> pardon me family friends let's see hello distinguished guests and Holly Williams, thank you so much for being here, and, and Jen, Jenny Richardson, and all of you who are here. Anyway, um, but most importantly, thank you my brothers and sisters for being here, because that's what's most important, right? Because regardless of our differences, regardless of our faith, we're all brothers and sisters. Um, I do want you to know how much I love you. And, and, and that's the truth. I love it. Um, and I hope that any of the words I may speak today are words of truth and that may help you in leading you forward in this stage of your life. I'd like to focus on a couple of main points uh, that I hope that answer some basic questions like where did we come from? What's our purpose? How do we find joy? Okay, the first part is simple. We're all children of God. Period. Doesn't matter our differences. Uh, really, it, it, it doesn't matter. Our differences are so much smaller than the things we have in common. Uh, for example, I'm so happy to see there's a couple of my little uh, daughters of Islam out there and their mother, and it makes me so happy to see them because we have so much in common in our beliefs. It's all much smaller than our sameness. Okay, so in the Old Testament, in the book of Jeremiah, uh, and by the way, I'm kind of stealing this a little bit from the Bishop Desmond Tutu. And if you don't know who he is, he's the... I'm not sure he's still alive, quite frankly. But anyway, he was Bishop Emeritus of the Episcopal Church in South Africa. And he, along with Nelson Mandela, uh, helped bring an end to apartheid. And I was lucky enough and blessed enough to be able to meet him and hear a speech he gave um, in Minneapolis. And he, he focused on this. And in the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah ex is expressing his fear to God about being called to be a prophet at such a young age. 
basically it's like nobody's going to listen to me. I'm just a child. Now, more on that part later. But God answers him in part by saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. We lived with God before. He knew us then, and he knows us now. None of this is an accident. Some of this may look like accidents. I mean, I think, quite frankly, I was one, but, um, but in the eyes of God, there is no accident. There's no such thing as an accidental human. You're all here for a purpose. You were planned, and you have world. So that's where we came from. So the next part is what's our purpose? While we're, while we're here, what is our purpose? Much of our purpose is to learn and grow and to be ready for the next life. This is just a way station, right? We were there, now we're here, and then we're going to go there. And we want to be the best us that we can be while we're here so we can take that to the next level and continue to progress. One of my favorite scriptures of all time um, speaks of that purpose. It's found in 2 Nephi chapter 2, verse 25, and I'm sure many of you could quote it. Adam fell that men might be, and men are, that they might have joy. So part of our purpose here on earth is to have joy. Um, in the Quran, in our God, and I'm sure I'm butchering that, chapter 13, verse 29, and there are different interpretations of it, but it says, uh, the Prophet Muhammad says, those who believe and do right, joy is for them, and bliss their journeys end. And there's other scriptures from other faiths as well. In the Hindu Vedas, in the, in the uh, Torah, that emphasize God's desire for us to have joy. So, first we have to look at where does joy come from, but we should probably define what joy is not. The great philosopher and ridiculously great boxer Muhammad Ali said, Pleasure is not happiness. It has no more substance than a shadow following a man. Seeking worldly pleasure usually leads to the opposite of joy. Also remember this, no one and nothing can ever make you happy. That <laughs> sounds kind of sad, doesn't it? But it's not. Uh, because Joy comes from fulfilling other parts of your purpose. And a lot of that has to do with forgetting yourself and serving others. So what does God want us to do? Whether you're Hindu, Buddhist, Muslim, Christian, whatever. What does God want us to do? He wants us to feed the hungry. He wants us to clothe the naked. He wants to comfort those in need of comfort. He wants us to be friends, the friends. But he works through us. Right? He does it all through us. It is when we serve God by serving others that we truly find joy. So, you want to go out there and get rich and famous? Fine. That's great. A lot of rich and famous people fulfill that and use their wealth and all that kind of stuff to serve others. That's fine. But using wealth, yeah, using wealth and fame to help others is great. But in the end, who is more important than the eyes of God? The rich man who hoards his wealth, or the humble person who serves others? 
Let's go back to Jeremiah real quick. Jeremiah was just a kid. Mary was just a kid. So many of the prophets were just kids. God calls the young. He doesn't call people my age. I'm old. <laughs> um, like, eh, whatever. If he was going to do it, he'd have done it. Hey, I'm going to call the youth. Um, he calls the young to change the world. He really does. Um, so how about this? Why don't you go out there and change the world? Why don't you end racism and poverty and war and hunger? But while you're at it, find your joy. And joy truly comes from serving others. And I'm going to end in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.